light and love that is Unity of Lawrence. Welcome to this wonderful, almost last day of October. How did that happen? Are you all going trick-or-treating tomorrow? Or have you already been? Oh, okay. Grateful to see you all here. <laughs> Let's take a centering breath and open to the divine in all of us and listen to this prayer. On this day, we dedicate our hearts to peace on earth. We appreciate everyone's spiritual journey and the abundant blessings bestowed upon us. In unity with all who seek to express freedom, joy, and transformation, we welcome our divine inheritance as creators. We come from love, as love, to be love. In harmony with this truth, we live to the best of our ability with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. And so it is. Amen. Our prayer chaplains are trained to hold sacred space and pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. If there is anything in your heart to be held in prayer, we invite you to see Karen. Today, uh, after following today's service at the front of the sanctuary. And now please stand and join Holly in singing Woke Up This Morning. Ain't nothing wrong with my mind State of freedom Ain't nothing wrong with my mind State of freedom There ain't nothing wrong with your mind State of freedom Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Singing and praying with our minds. I'm singing and praying with my mind. State on freedom. Singing and praying with my mind. State on freedom. I'm singing and praying with my mind. State on freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Well, thank you, Holly. Thank you, everyone. Now, of course, it's time for our unity intentions. Please share to get, please affirm with me unity's founding principle. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. And now our unity of Lawrence vision statement. United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And now our Unity of Lawrence mission statement. We are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. Millie Webb is a Kansas City-based singer-songwriter. Having grown up in Unity, Millie is a C graduate, the founder of Raise Up, a Unity-based group for conscience par conscious parenting and an active member of Unity Village Chapel. She uses her understanding of Unity principles to write music that touches on the, the human experience and the Christ nature within, always seeking to bring about a smile, a tear, or an aha moment. She is delighted to be sharing this morning with all the beautiful souls of Unity of Lawrence and to all of those joining in for today's service. Welcome, Millie. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. shame, guilt, or sin. None of that when I look within. Not needing to be saved or born again. No need to wait for the love to begin. Love is unconditional. I confess I'm already worthy of worthiness. I was born in grace, already blessed, made in the image of holiness. I am one with spirit. I am in and of the whole. My world is a reflection of this truth I know there is no separation between my God and me I am born in original love I am born in original love every person a reminder to me every moment an opportunity to open up, to rise up, and know that I am free, and know that there is nothing more I need to be, cause I am one with the spirit, I am in and of the whole, my world is a reflection of this truth, I know there is no separation between my God and me, I am born in original love. I am born in original love. Divine mind is my foundation. Divine wisdom guides my way. All abundance is my birthright, and I claim it now. 
Thank you, Billy. It was wonderful. Holly Taylor is a multifaceted artist who shines the light of hope through her artistic and healing endeavors. In addition to her role as music director here at Unity of Lawrence, she is a board certified music therapist, a creative writer, and a contributing singer songwriter and multi instrumentalist for Folk and the Flow and Star Sister Revival. If you want to learn more, her website is www.hollytaylor432.com. Welcome our own Holly Taylor. Thank you. Well, I can't think of a better voice for freedom than Millie. Thank you. That's beautiful. Okay, so the path of freedom. Good morning, explorers. Today, I'm going to be your trusty tour guide as we search for the path of freedom. Now, freedom does have a significant ring to it, and I'm thinking there's an X somewhere on this map. Um, I don't know. I'm not seeing anything on here. I'm going to need your help, actually, because it's maybe, maybe freedom is just a personal path that we take. So... Let me ask some questions instead. What path would lead you to accept a present moment? And do you trust it enough to walk it with your eyes wide open? Or are you praying for maybe a bridge over troubled waters to come down from the sky and get you there? Yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> and does it feel like it might take 40 years of walking in circles in the desert before you can cross over into that state of freedom? There's been a lot of experience and a lot of history about freedom. I would say freedom is a heavyweight contender when it comes to words that can get our attention. It's definitely one of the most sought after states of being. We can think about financial freedom, emotional freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of choice, freedom of religion, and the list goes on and on. And so my goal today is for us to look at our inner state of freedom, which is why freedom is a perfectly personal path for us all. So let me be clear, I'm not going to talk about hopping on some interstate, getting as far away as we can from it all. <laughs> no, we're bringing it inwards and talking about the inner state of freedom. Just like we can experience inner peace, we want to be able to experience that inner freedom that Millie was singing about. So Harriet Tubman said, I freed a thousand slaves, but I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew that they were slaves. So that's a really bold statement that goes straight to the heart of the inner struggle of inner bondage. So one of my first school reports was on the life of Harriet Tubman. And as a child, I was definitely impressed with her. But my eyes really lit up when I found out about the Underground Railroad. To me, that was proof that where there's a will, there's a way. And so looking back at those historical events, I can see that the freedom of human rights was not only a civil movement, but it was also a literal physical movement that achieved that change. And the Underground Railroad really demonstrated the power of alignment in their core belief for freedom. So during that time of all the civil unrest on the surface, I imagine that pulse of the rhythm and the movement and the quiet footsteps underground reconfiguring life as we know it today. And those footsteps continue to reverberate on and on, planting the seeds that will eventually lead to freedom for all. And so here we are in the free state, proud of that stand that was taken not so many years ago for civil rights. And as we honor that stand, we can take a deeper look within ourselves and honor our own experience of freedom. I think there's a tendency to consider freedom like it's across some finish line over there. And so consider for a moment what did it take when someone emerged from the Underground Railroad? It was not really a finish line. It was an opportunity for a new beginning. Freedom was the path. It wasn't really the destination. And so think about your sense of freedom. Are there places or situations in your life that you're blocked from experiencing freedom? For most of us, there are some places where we're kind of just getting by, not really feeling all that empowered. And so we're not talking about laws of the land today. We're just talking about living life to its fullest. 
I recently read an email blog from one of our members and best-selling author Pam Grout. In it she said, disconnection after all is the exact opposite of freedom. When you no longer trust others or the universe or the life force that thrums through us all. And so you can feel there's a real sense of disparity and hopelessness that comes when we're not experiencing freedom. And disconnection is one of those human conditions that we might experience from time to time. But the great news is that it's not the truth of who we are. Because in unity, our first principle acknowledges that we are one with the divine and all there is. No separation. Our second principle says that all that is in our, cre in our creation radiates from a source of divine goodness or love. Moving on to that third unity principle, we have the power to create our experiences through our thoughts. We're going to focus there today. John 8.32 also says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So the ability to create freedom in all these different places in our lives is right there. We can either experience it or be blocked and feel that blockage from it through that system of beliefs. So my title, The Path of Freedom, led me back to Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. But this time, I found a new line of wisdom that spoke to me. Because he was waxing eloquently about choosing between those two different alluring paths. But he had to comfort himself for a moment to say, I kept the first path for another day. There'd be a little attachment there. But no, okay, he exhaled, and he admitted the truth about being a traveler. And then he said, Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. And as we know, he took the path less traveled by, and that made all the difference. But putting it into our context today, I think that all the difference came from the freedom that he gave himself to flow on and not get stuck with that grip of holding on, that just in case the grass might be greener over there or being stuck in the grip of indecision, those are the kind of attachments that the Buddhists refer to as suffering, right? So accepting that and being free to walk forward on the path without worrying about those unknowns or being shackled to the past is the freedom of peace of mind. Because way leads on to way. And let those be words of peace to you today. Way leads on to way. There is always a path. And like the cycle of life, from birth through death, the rhythm of the river keeps flowing on. And divine source is the ultimate flow of good. And so the path of freedom was aligned in that flow of goodness. To go back into slavery of any kind is a mentality that no longer fits this reality. And now that world has to hide in the underground. And so as we all continue to expand in our experience of knowledge, because ways lead to ways, it's just the law of the natural world. And so if you feel bondage of chaos or uncertainty, I encourage you to find that flow of good in your life and shift your focus there to appreciate it. Maybe you've heard Tony Robbins say, energy flows where your attention goes. But if you prefer, here's a neuroscientist perspective by Daniel Siegel. He says, where attention goes, neural firing flows and neural connection grows. It sounds like a unity principle number three to me. And so whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on such things. Philippians 4.8. If we can access the freedom through our focus, those praiseworthy things can grow into fruition in our lives. Not too long ago, I was at the Posse Music Conference. It was at Unity Village. And um, this is a great example of a group of people who focus and make music in honor of the praiseworthy things in life. It's really why we use music each Sunday, to help us focus, to remember our truths, and to reset our state of mind. And this time when I was out there, I noticed the labyrinth. It really called to me. I knew I was gonna walk it while I was there. And I was working through some unsettled thoughts that day and really was desiring that clarity of internal, internal peace or personal freedom. So I went and sat by the labyrinth, preparing myself to go on that walk. And I read a couple pages from The Lessons in Truth by H. Emily Cady, one of the Unity classics, to help me focus my mind. 
And I would refer for you guys to check out our Unity Lending Library just around the corner there, down towards the stairs. I'll bring back that book so you guys can check it out. <laughs> and so I knew meditation in that very moment was kind of out of my reach. And so I just went in to the motion spot. And as soon as I got into motion, I got into a rhythm of footsteps on the labyrinth. And that was what set me free. And so with every step I took, I recited some core truths. I said my praiseworthy gratitude list, my affirmations and my prayers. And I breathed deeply and I spoke in the rhythm of my footsteps. Just like I learned drum set as a child, walking and talking with my mind set on freedom. And so I was pounding those truths into my head and into my cells. But the truth be told, our cells really are not stubborn. They're really open and always listening for our own divine direction. And so whenever you find alignment with your bliss, your cells are there celebrating with that resonance with you. And so as I spent some, some minutes doing those twists and turns of the labyrinth, I was there resetting the focus and reestablishing my personal strength and just allowing truth to be the central point in all that mattered in that moment. And at the same time, I was aligned with the universal law of motion. I was comforted and invigorated with that aliveness of those truths coming alive within me and my cells. And so in that short amount of time, I shifted into a state of joy and felt freedom and acceptance. I didn't realize until later that I was taking a freedom walk, releasing the old bondage and acknowledging that newness and the wonder of life in the present moment. And so when we experience states of freedom, we can rejoice in finding the perfect pathways that leads us ways leading to ways and taking each step along that journey. And so some point this week, maybe you want to do it every day, I invite you to take a freedom walk, you know, wherever you are, however you want to do it. Spend some time acknowledging those core truths to you and put them into motion. So let's not forget about the walk of freedom that happened in 1963. That was one of the biggest civil rights demonstrations leading up to the pivotal moments for Martin Luther King. With his clear vision of freedom put to the rhythm of well over 100,000 people's footsteps, in the words of Sam Cooke, it's been a long, long time coming, but I know a change is gonna come. Oh, yes it will. And that is the power of an affirmative statement that you can feel deep inside your bones. So my experience about walking in the labyrinth at Unity Village, it really just reminded me of the importance of being intentional with the flow of energy and to set my thoughts into rhythm of spiritual truth and to direct my body in purposeful steps, literally reprogramming my focus, finding my freedom away from those old thought patterns and finding alignment in my action. There's another woman who saw both bondage and freedom. Her name was Edith Eager, and she was a ballerina and a gymnast. She had spent most of her childhood training to compete in the Hungarian Olympics. But because she was Jewish, she was denied that right. And when she was 16, she and her family were taken and put on a train that led them to the concentration camp at Auschwitz, Germany. Now this story lands a little close to home for me because when I was 16, I actually did visit Auschwitz and um, as a tourist for a concert band at that time. I can say from my experience that the grounds there literally looked like they were in black and white still. The shock imprint in that energetic field there was strong. But in some of the darkest times of history, the brightest lights do shine. And Edith's mother spoke some very powerful words to her as they were boarding the train. She told her, just remember, no one can take away from you what you put here in your own mind. So again, that third unity principle rings out in truth. Our thoughts can help shape our experiences. And so Edith took those words to heart and it helped her to survive. And as a dancer, she was chosen to entertain the very man who was in charge of the whole camp. And so to get through that, she would close her eyes and imagine herself dancing to Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet at the Budapest Opera House. And that carried her through all the fear and the grief that she was experiencing. 
And so it was really her power of imagination that got her through. And I am happy to report to you that at the age of 87, Edith was still going swing dancing every Sunday. And when asked why she does it, she said, I want to live a full life and not be damaged goods. So when we close our service today, I want you to give a nod to Edith, enjoying her freedom, swing dancing. Maybe you'll even give her a dance. So as we sit here today, I want you to consider, to consider that you were endowed by the pen of Thomas Jefferson with the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But let's get this straight. Someone that we've never met before picked up a pen of power and put an affirmation declaration into the flow and it's lasted for over two centuries. So I gave you guys a mighty piece of parchment today if you saw it out on the foyer and it is your invitation to take up your pen of power and write your own personal declaration or affirmation that has to do with your flow of freedom. And so it says, I, and fill in your name, hold this truth to be self-evident. I declare that I am endowed with, fill in the blank. And then we complete that with, and so it is, or in the West African translation, Ashe. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So do please fill these out today. If you have an idea of what you want to say right now, go ahead and do that. If not, when you find that moment in time today, you can hold that in your mind as your focus for freedom. So in principle, we're always free and always will be free. Our work is in releasing ourselves from those perceived limitations and those old unworthy mentalities of thoughts. So Abraham Hicks says there's a triad of intentions that we come into this life with. And guess what? Number one is freedom. No wonder it's such a significant word for us. <clears throat> Our second intention that we take part in in this life is the constant growth and expansion of the universe. And that is inevitable. It is just what we do. And the third reason for being here is joy. And so Esther says that's the basis of who we are. We are so free that we could choose bondage if we like. But whatever our choices, the path of life is such that growth and expansion are inevitable in the flow of motion. But really the biggest life experience that we came for to experience is joy. And so to me that expanding life path of freedom gifted us with a life partner called joy. And so this is echoed in the works of Dr. Sue Mortar, Rennie Davis, and many others that the underlying basis of life's flow of energy is really joy. So the question to ask yourself is, are you free to experience joy? At the Posse Fest, I met um, an 88-year-old woman, and her name was Joy C. And she would introduce herself and say, hi, I'm Joy C, J-O-Y-S-E-E. -E. Can you see the joy? And she was full of it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was a really beautiful state. Um, now speaking of joy, during our meditation, I'm going to share a song from Ricky Byers. She is a very talented musician, composer, storyteller, a very deep soul. But I can tell you, she is full of the most ornery kind of joy that you can imagine. <laughs> imagine somebody that smile and laugh is really contagious, and that's Ricky. Anybody like that has a way of interrupting those prepaved thoughts in our minds so that we can find our way back to the present. And sometimes it's nature or a song that can lift us up and come back to the truth of the present. And that moment is your state of personal freedom. It's to experience the state of presence, to find resonance, to breathe into the vibrance of that universal flow, to create ease of movement in your body and emotions, in our spirit, in our connection with all there is. This is the freedom state. And I hope you'll feel that during meditation today and in our daily lives. In the West African culture, the word ashe touches on that state. And remember, when we use our third principle, we can create and recreate those moments of resonance here in our minds and allow that freedom and joy to become permanent residence there in our sacred house. And as we're getting closer to that time of meditation, we're going to listen first to Ricky Byers leading a chant at the Posse Fest called Ashe O. And Ashe is used at the close of a prayer 
And it has that power of it is so, or so mote it be. And that's why I closed this statement here with that. But she told us about creating a playful call and response with the little boy as she was writing this song. She'd say to him, Ashe? And he'd say, Ashe O. And he was very confident in this. And so she added the Ashe O into her chant as that nod and that acknowledgement of the life force that makes change happen. And so as we get ready to listen to this moment from the Posse Fest just a few weeks ago, I want you to know that we are here in that flow of Ashe. And so we want to allow those words and the music to just come down upon us. It can wash over us. It can recharge us, refocus us. And in that moment, let's just experience resonance in oneness, especially when we echo into some moments of silence. And remember that the flow of freedom has already been set in motion, and the power of creation just continues to grow and to flow. And so it is. Ashe, Asheo. And so as we get ready to go into this time of meditation, we're going to begin it, and then Millie's going to come up and minister to us as well with song. I want to invite you to try meditation in motion today. Allow your bodies to have the freedom to sway a little bit in your chairs if you feel that. Let your arms move as they wish. Just be mindful of everybody beside you. And we'll be one with that oneness of truth and give ourselves that freedom to experience the flow as we align with the power of freedom within. And the first thing we want to do is just start first by exhaling. And then we'll begin that slow inhale and exhale as we begin into this song. Today we acknowledge that we are one in the flow of life and we rest in the knowing that we are walking upon our personal path of freedom. As we breathe in and out, we're receiving the gifts of life for they are already given freely to us. Take a deep breath and receive that breath into your mind, cleanse 
and find the abundance of goodness in truth. Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, think on these things. And we'll exhale, releasing those seeds of truth that have been rooted into the earth deep below us. And we're going to be in that cycle of breathing in peace, feeling our space of freedom in our minds and our bodies as we enter into a moment of silence. So we ease back into that life-filling breath. Bring the sensation back into your fingertips. Let your wrists and ankles move in a circle. And just enjoy these words and this song that Millie's going to minister to us with in this state of meditation. So you breathe in, and just say that in your mind, I am the love of God. And really that's a celebration for us today. That we remember our ways lead on to ways. 
that we are in the flow of the path of freedom, the life partner called joy, always expanding and in motion. Let's take in one more deep breath. And we're going to bring some life and vibrancy into our cells as we celebrate this knowledge of freedom on our personalized path. And Millie's going to sing for us one more song. Thank you, thank you, Holly. Thank you, Millie. Where are we? Oh, we're here. Okay. As our ushers come forward our time for our time of thanks, I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our hearts. Let's affirm together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give and all that I receive. And as the love offering is collected, let's join Holly in singing, I am alive with the Spirit of God. 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 
I am alive with the Spirit of God. I am alive, alive with the Spirit of God. I am 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 alive, alive with the Spirit of God. Yeah, I am alive, alive with the Spirit of God. Here is our prayer of thanks. Please listen. We are grateful and we ask, ooh, let's start this again. Here is our prayer of thanks. We are grateful and as we bless the flow of good that supports our unity community, we bless the givers who give their time, talent, and treasure. We stand in knowing that the flow of good goes forth only to return again and again, and so it is, amen. Announcement time. A special welcome to our guests today. Thank you for joining us. If you would like more information about the Unity Movement and Unity of Lawrence, pick up a welcome packet in the foyer. The Lunch Bunch is going to Jason's Deli at 3140 Iowa Street. All are welcome. We are joining the Light Center for a winter clothing drive sponsored by the Lawrence Indian United Methodist Church. They are looking for donations of larger size coats and clothes, along with cold weather hats, gloves, and scarves. The donation bin is in the back of the sanctuary and will be there through November 13th. Thank you. Mandela Art Ex Exhibition opening reception will be Thursday, November 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Come and meet the artist, Phil Roger, and view his spectacular Mandela pieces. Phil Roger has studied, created, taught, and applied the Mandela process to, for several decades, seeing them as much more than just fascinating designs. He is offering a hands-on workshop on Mandela creation and application. The workshop will be held on Saturday, November 12th, 10.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at the Delaware Commons, 1222 Delaware Street. A $15 fee is requested. All art materials will be provided. Bring a bag lunch, coffee, tea, and water will be provided. Sign up and more information of, sign up and more information in the foyer. Spirit on the move, meeting on November 12th at 9 a.m. Hike at the Lawrence Rotary Arboretum, 1500 West 27th Street. Walk a quarter to three miles, whatever distance you prefer. Restrooms and water are available. Mark those calendars for November 17th at 6.30 p.m. We're going to have a fun and amazing evening at Unity's Got Talent. This is your chance to share and shine or be part of the all-important Unity community audience. Musicians, poets, storytellers, dancers, comedians, and the like are invited. This will be a family-friendly event. All ages are welcome to perform. This is a great opportunity to invite your talented friends and family to come out and take part in the Unity community. We have a sign-up sheet in the foyer for those who would like to participate in the showcase. Please join us next week when Jay Pryor leads us in a prosperity-focused service with Joe Anderson. Special music with Kelly Hunt. Check out the new calendar for information. And now it's time to sing in our youth. All right, let's stand. You are walking in the light, in the light, and the light. You are walking in the light, in the light of God. In the light, 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 in the light of God. Hi, everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, today we just played um, Jenga. And then we did a domino rally, question mark? Yeah. And then we did a puzzle. So it was just some fun playtime today. That's all I have. Thank you. Oh, and if you want to know that she's got the set. Yeah. Yes. OK, congregation, let's bless our youth. Rub our hands together. Say together. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. 
and we behold the divinity in you. Congregation, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the divinity in you. Yes, thank you, thank you. Because our vision is celebrating a peaceful and abundant world for all, let's all join and sing the peace song. Yeah. 